the University of Kentucky football. Great day for football and the Commonwealth in general. Um, echo kind of what uh, Coach Stu said. Uh, this has been a really enjoyable process. A lot of neat kids in this class, great families, um, great high school coaches. Thought it was a great team effort led by Coach Stoops. I think it always starts with the head coach. Um, he's a tremendous recruiter, does a great job being who he is at all times. Um, a lot of effort, hard work. Um, I think there's a lot of people to think. That Dr. Capilouto and the, and the work he's doing, especially with the dorms, was a huge hit with our uh, with our recruits and their families. Um, the efforts led by Mitch with the stadium renovation and, and the new facility that got announced. It was really great timing. Kind of got when he got late. You know, I don't think he gets enough credit for his marketing, but. Um, um, you know, I think some other people behind the scenes that y'all don't really think about that, that deserve a lot of praise for this too is the wives, the coaching wives. Uh, they do a tremendous job, especially on official visits. Um, you know, Coach, Coach Corum and Coach Edmund, who uh, spend a lot of time with these kids when they come on campus, and that's a huge part of why guys make decisions. Because as you all know, you know, Coach Warren and Coach Edmund will spend as much time with all these kids as we will. And then another person is Barb Denison in our academics, who does a great job making the families feel comfortable with leaving their, their child in her hands academically. Um, and then we talked about um, Dan Breslitz and his people. Um, I thought we on, on offense, we uh, our two biggest needs were a wide receiver and, and offensive line. Really pleased with the, with the class we signed there. I'm sure you are going to ask some questions. Uh, about those, but a great day overall. Neil is the guy who recruits the state of Kentucky. I'm gratified for you by the four kids you pulled out of here. Yeah, well, team after Mark, it's uh, very excited. You know, I, I think that um, it, it's huge for the success of our program to keep the, the kids that are the best players and the best fits for us in the Commonwealth to keep them home. You know, and, and sometimes there's, there's, there's occasions where you know, the, the best players aren't the best fits, but we felt like the, the four best players in, in the Commonwealth this year were great fits for our program. Great team effort to get those guys. You know, I think it really started with, uh, with Drew when he came on board uh, and turned down a lot of national programs and, and guys that recruited him a lot, a lot, uh, a lot longer. And he set the process, he set the, he set the ball rolling. Then Adrian Middleton, who I thought you had a really good article about yesterday uh, in the paper, kind of, uh, shrugging a little bit there, but <laughs> yeah, he, uh, no, but I think he's really going to be a guy that's, that's, uh, hasn't been talked about as much as maybe some other people, but, and then, uh, DJ did a great job, uh, DJ Elliott's the one that really, that really recruited, uh, Lloyd, especially the last month, and really developed a relationship with his mother and, and, and Lloyd, um, and then the, the big guy, Matt Elam. You know, go in and, and go head to head and, and beat some of the best programs in the country. You know, Coach Stoops was really, really active with him. And then, you know, DJ and, and, and Jimmy also. Yeah, you know, what is it about Drew that makes you all think he can compete for this job from day one? Well, he's, he's got the intangibles, first of all. He's got tremendous leadership skills, um, great character. He uh, loves the game of football, studies it. Uh, and then, you know, the tangible skills he has, he gets the ball out of his hand fast, physically. He, he's ready. You know, he's about 215 pounds right now. Um, I think we got to be, we got to keep in mind that, you know, he's 18 years old. And, you know, he's still, still technically in his last year of high school, or should be anyway. So I think we got to keep our expectations in, in, in check. But he has those abilities that will give him an opportunity to come in and compete. And he's, he's going to be thrown in the fire this spring. Yeah, you guys first start for this last game, the big question is whether you could keep it together. Mm -hmm. How much of the recruitment was that stuff, and, and what do you think was the difference in doing that? Well, you know, once we got some really solid individuals in early, um, you know, we can't direct them in any, in any manner. But those guys have strong personalities. You know, if you look at, you know, like Dorian Hendricks on defense, and Drew Barker on offense, and Kel Horton, Thaddeus Snodgrass, those guys have really strong personalities, you know, and, and they got a little charisma about them, and, and other guys are drawn to them. So once those guys were in the boat and we really felt like they were solidified, I think, you know, they deserve some credit too because these kids that, that came on as, as the process went on really were drawn to those guys. Um, and I think part of it, we were, we were really honest with them. 
you know, I don't, I don't think we try to, um, you know, we didn't minimize, you know, where we were as a program. We knew we were in the, the, the foundation building process. We knew it was going to take a little bit of work, or a lot of work, really. Um, so we didn't sell them on a bunch of things that, that we knew weren't going to be possible early. Yeah, can you talk about uh, what Williams and Bone will add to the offense? Yeah, uh, you talk about Boom or, or, or TV? Two Williams. Boom Williams, oh, Williams. Boom Williams. Boom. Yeah, he, he's a guy that's really a perfect fit for our offense. Um, he, he's, he's big enough to, to pick up the blitz. He can run inside and outside. Uh, we can use him in the slot zone as well. Uh, he's really, really fast. Okay? He has the ability to make people miss in, in space. Really a great get by Coach Pivoto. You go into Atlanta and get those committed to Georgia for a long time and, and bring him up, you know, Great, great family. Go make a big contribution. Who was Elliot Blake Bone. Blake Bone. Well, that 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 was our number one goal in the receiver core this year. We had good size. You know, I think if you look at our roster right now, the guys that played last year really didn't have anybody over that six foot, or six foot one range. And everybody can run in this league, uh, but you got to have length because regardless how fast you are, you know, length wins. And we felt like we had two guys with great length. Coach Maynard went and got one of the top kids out of South Carolina, which is a great testament to him. And he's a guy that he's got to put on some weight and got to get stronger. But I thought he had two really good all-star showings in the Shrine Bowl and the, and the offense defensive bowl against some really good opponents. So I feel good about him coming in and, and being able to help us right away. Stoops said if he was honest that maybe he didn't think it would happen this quickly. Are you a little bit surprised, too? Yeah, as far as talking about recruiting, a class like that. you know what? Um, and I think that's something that's that's been asked a few few a few times in different ways, and I'm not I'm not overly surprised in this being a lot because the location we have is really centrally located. You can get to a lot of places within a six hour radius, and I think Coach Stoops, he himself is a tremendous recruiter, but he hired a bunch of guys that are really can really relate to the young guy, the the kids that were recruiting, have some really good connections, they can evaluate. And then you add on to that, you know, the schematic success that, that DJ and, and Mark had at Florida State and, and that we've been able to have at, at, at Texas Tech and Troy and those type of places. And then on top of that, you know, all the things that are going on campus. I talked about the dorms. You know, they're going to be, our guys are going to be living in brand new dorms when they get here. That's, you know, that's a little thing that not people think of. That's big. You know, then you got the stadium renovation and then you got the, the new practice facility. You, uh, Discuss the last mile with uh, oh. Stallings. How did yeah, that, that was. Uh, how did that come about? Well, I wish I was making that up, but uh, I lived that. We uh, we were right in the middle of the storm last Tuesday, and uh, you know, basically, we were in a car for seven hours. Coach Slarman and I were, which we shared about all the information we could with that seven hour in a car. Uh, got to the point where the road was closed, so. We either were going to sit in the car or we were going to walk to the school. We walked to the school. I got in trouble because I, cause I told Jen that, uh, that he fell on the way. But, uh, but we got to the school and we were able to meet with Bunchy and, and uh, couldn't get out. The road was closed. So uh, we slept on the training table there for three or four hours. We had to, we had to uh, report it to the NCAA because you can't go into two different days. But since the since the SEC got locked in their or stuck in their offices, we got okay. Any other questions, Coach Brown? Is that top of the list of your recruiting experience? Yes, that that is that is right at the top. I hope I don't have one that, that exceeds that. You know, I've had people who saw the Super Bowl commercial say to me, "Boy, Drew Barker looks like the starting quarterback. Looks like he's going to be the guy." Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing that's not really the case. That there's going to be a competition and so yeah. forth. Do you? I'm not sure our marketing people ask Coach Stoops or myself. <laughs> but, you know, no, it was good. I think I think it just happened that he was right at the forefront. You know, all those new guys were there, offense and defense, and thought our marketing people did a tremendous job. They had um, every different uniform combination was in that commercial. Um, but no, he's not. He's got to go win. You know, it's no different than. The other guys, Daddy Snodgrass, come in a wide out. I mean, they're going to go win their playing time. It's the same thing with him. Talked about size of receiver. What are you expecting from Dorian Baker right away? Yeah, I mean, he came to camp here, and um, he he was physically, 
he looks the part. You know, he's 6'3". He's going to be, I think he'll be 215, 220 pounds when you get here. And, and basically, when, for this offense, what we're looking for is we want some guys that are really fast that can, can, can really beat you over the top. You know, guys like Jeff Bidette. Um, we want some guys that are really solid, that are, uh, that are strong, that can kind of do everything. Kind of guys like Javis Blue, you know, Thaddeus Snodgrass, I think Lonnie Mature is going to be one of those type of guys. Um, and then you want little guys that can make you miss, you know, not real little, but, you know, like our Ron Tibbins type kids uh, that maybe can play a little running back. And then you want big physical guys, you know, guys like Alex Montgomery, guys like Dorian Baker, um, that you can play on the inside or play on the outside, and they're physically imposing. You know, they're bigger than the nickels of their corners. And, and Dorian's going to be one of those guys. He uh, He's a guy that I'm, I'm really excited about. I think he's... He's raw right now, but when he really gets honed in on that position and uh, is training year round to be a great receiver, I think I think he's gonna have a tremendous career. Here. That it. Invites Coach Brown. Not Coach. All right. Thank you all.